going back to the beginning, to start with this, we're going back to the beginning, I think we should really hear a little bit about Star Council, because the first time we've talked to you on the tube, and yeah. I think well, you should tell us about where you got Mick from and stuff like that, you know, okay. where you well, are, I don't know where you met even, right. and where you found him, or genius parents like that. Um, well, I knew Mick quite a few years ago. I got to know him because he used to be in a group called the Merton Parkers, which is the band who started the Mod Revival. It was probably Mick alone who started it, actually. And um, I got to know him through that. We, we met, I was, there was talk of me producing their LP once or something, which never came about. And Mick also, um, Mick also played on the jam track, played piano on, it, on it, one of the jam's LP tracks. And I just knew him vaguely from that. And I always liked his style, and especially like the fact that he played piano and organ and not synthesizers, yeah. you know, he's brought up on, on, a, on like, I suppose, traditional keyboard instruments. I remember changing the style council all the time, getting different... Yeah, I mean, there's one, I suppose, Steve White, who's, the, who's drummed for us on most of the records and done all the live concerts, he's more or less a permanent member, I suppose, just as the left unsaid, really. Yeah. I mean, he's free to do whatever he wants to do. A complicated thing to get together, was it? Um, well, actually, it came together quite easily. Although we, we only decided to do it within a space of a week or so. We've done the backing track on a Thursday in one day, and then we got all the singers together on the Friday the following day. And um, we just rang them up, and all of them were really were agreeable to it and all really into the idea. So it was quite easy in that way. And Jimmy Ruffin came down. He was coming down to meet us anyway, because he might be working with us. This is the Jimmy Ruffin, the Jimmy Ruffin. broken hearted. Yeah. And, um, and he was very sympathetic because his dad was a minor you know, in America and his, and his dad suffered a lot from, uh, from, that, from a lot of lung diseases and things. So he was very sympathetic towards it and he was really well into doing it. And he done it there, you know, then and there on the spot really, more or less. So you did, like, you, I know you do a lot of uh, benefits for CND, which can't be bad. But do you think sometimes that, you're, that a lot of people who buy your records aren't, uh, it's a thing that they don't understand? Or do you think most of the people that buy your records are up for all of that? Well, I think there's always a few people who obviously aren't, aren't aware of it. Um, and there's obviously those who don't agree with it as well, you know, maybe they just like the music, they don't necessarily agree with my views, which I suppose is fair enough. But, um, I mean, you know, one of the other points of doing, like, C&D concerts is, is to try and get, you know, the viewpoint across to other people who maybe aren't aware of it or never thought about it before. Yeah. Just that I put a lot into the lyrics, and I know that I get accused of being pompous about my lyrics and stuff, but I put a lot into them and I'm serious about them, you know, so I, I want people to seriously listen to them. You right? mean what you say? Yeah, I mean, I haven't written them for nothing. I've written them just to fill out, you know, a few bars of music or something. Any sorts of books do you like? I like all sorts of books, really. I like, um, I like sort of historical books. I also like, um... What sort of history, what? The French Revolution. Yeah? Rasputin. Any kind of Western books. I just, I don't care what period it's from, you know. Yeah. Just different sub sub things that I know about. Yeah. Um, I also like some of the George Orwell stuff. Um, do you think, do you think, I mean, I don't, I think probably things are much the same as they were in 1934, but do you think things are going like George Orwell predicted? No, because there's those things that, those things were always around anyway, they were around at the time he wrote the book, yeah. you know, you mean like 1984, yeah. when it, all he done was just exaggerate on what was already happening in the world, you know. Yeah. I mean, torture and totalitarianism has, has always been with us anyway ever since time began, I suppose. You know. Yeah. yeah. Changed yourself over a lot since, like, beginning, starting of the jam, becoming successful with them. Do you think you've changed since the beginning of, of that? Do you think you've mellowed, or you've become more one way over? No, I think I'm the same, really. I just think possibly I'm a bit more open-minded than I used to be, but I don't think that's mellowing. Yeah. I think I don't think I particularly changed at all. The same old wealth and the same old 